Hi, welcome to What's Happening. Here are the top five stories. At number five, Nigeria has recorded 747 new cases of COVID-19 and four new deaths as the third wave of the pandemic has begun to ravage the country. The new cases were reported on Wednesday and now ranks as the highest daily infection in more than six months. According to the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, the new cases has raised Nigeria's total infection number to 176,011, while the fatality toll now stands at 2,167. At number four, about 115 persons from the southeast have been allegedly killed by security operatives between March and June 2021. This is according to a report by Amnesty International. The report revealed that relatives of the victims denied the deceased were part of the militants that were attacking security agents. The report titled, Nigeria, at least 115 people killed by security forces in four months in countries southeast, noted that many of the victims were deposited at government hospitals in Imo and Abia states. Hospital sources who spoke to Amnesty International stressed that all the victims deposited by the police had bullet injuries. The report added that at least 21 personnel were killed in three months in Imo State. The country director of Amnesty International, Osai Ojigo, said the evidence gathered by the organization painted a damning picture of ruthless excessive force by security operatives in Imo, Anambra and Abia states. At number three, the Federal Executive Council has approved $11.17 billion to link all Nigeria's coastal cities by rail in six years. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, made this known to State House correspondents after the virtual FEC meeting presided over by Vice President Yemi Osibanjo on Wednesday at the Presidential Villa Abuja. Mohammed explained that the Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, presented two memos which had to do with federal government's commitment to expanding and consolidating on the real project. The two memos had to do with the Kanu Jibia Rail and the Potakot Medugri Rail. At number two, the Nigerian army has disclosed that Boko Haram insurgents and bandits are using fertilizers to make improvised explosive devices. The assistant director of army public relations, Haruna Sani, said this in a statement in Yola on Wednesday, while explaining why the headquarters of 28th Task Force Brigade, Madagali, seized 200 bags of fertilizers in Adamawa State. The army also denied speculations that soldiers were selling fertilizers to farmers in Adamawa. Sani explained that the seizure of fertilizers in the state followed the ban on the sale of fertilizers and allied materials by the authorities. According to him, the ban would prevent the products from getting into the hands of criminals and insurgents. At number one, the Federal Executive Council has approved the acquisition of 20% shares in the Dangote Petroleum and Petrochemical Refinery by the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation. The Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timmy Press Silva, revealed this to State House correspondents after the virtual FEC meeting on Wednesday, presided over by Vice President Yemi Usi Banjo at the Presidential Villa. Silva said the acquisition was in the sum of $2.76 billion. He said the Council also approved contracts for the rehabilitation of Wari and Kaduna refineries in the sum of $1.5 billion. Silva noted that the council discussed the need to give periodic updates on the projects and that there will soon be an inspection of work in the Potakot refinery. Always remember to wear your mask, wash your hands and stay safe. That's all for now. See you next time on What's Happening.